Hi friends, David here from Learn Stage Lighting and Learn Stage Lighting Gear, and today we're talking about this. LED wall processors, particularly two of the most popular ones out there, the Novastar VX400, which of course this pricing is at the time of the recording, will probably change later, and the Novastar KU20. Which do you choose? Bum, bada, bum, bum, bum. Let's dive in. Okay, so when choosing an LED wall processor, uh, I really like the uh, kind of the dichotomy, the comparison between these two processors because there's a couple things going on here, uh, multiple things to look at when comparing these two processors, okay? Or looking for any processor for your, your LED wall. The very first big difference between these two is the VX400 is part of the old school processors that you configure through Nova LCT. And what that basically looks like is you launch this old program called Nova LCT and you work through this funky wizard which has a lot of oddities around it and the chance of you uh, setting up something wrong in that software is fairly high if you've never used it before. Um, we've got videos on that, but it's kind of the dark ages. You can set it up if it's a kind of a typical wiring scheme from the front panel uh, completely and bypass that software, in which case you're good. Okay, but but you still, um, if you pop up to the KU20, the KU20 has the new VMP software, which allows so much more flexibility in setup, so much more capability in terms of color correction, edge correction, all sorts of good stuff, and is really a big step ahead for most users for most things. Um, not only that, it generally provides higher uh, quality processing, most people believe. It's got more outputs to it. For pixels, it, it does work well. It's got you know the ability, if you have, uh, cards that that do it you can you can send it low latency etc um, so there's a lot of good stuff there but the KU20 is also missing some things too that the VX400 does have and the biggest thing there if you haven't bought a processor before is the ability to switch to basically use it as a screen switcher for your switch okay so your KU20s feature a single input okay you're going to get your video in via HDMI which is fine if you have something doing your screen switching, some other device, okay? Which, you know, on higher end installations or permanent stuff, you know, that's gonna be the case. Or it's also fine if you literally only need one input, uh, which could be coming from, you know, uh, a computer most often, but it could be some other type of device, right? It could be, again, a video switcher doing your screens, a matrix router, whatever. This is one area that the VX400 does still win even now here in 2024 because it has basically two sections, okay? It has a full video switcher with multiple inputs and then it has the actual LED wall processor side. It's basically two different devices. Now, can you get that with a newer VMP type processor? Totally. Okay, you just have to jump up to something like the MX-20. Okay, so if we go to the MX-20, for example, um, which is not extru which is not at the time of this recording, you know, terribly more expensive than a VX400, but it is more expensive. Um, you get a bunch more outputs, um, but you also do get the ability to have that screen switching and also have gen lock. Which if you're using cameras that have gen lock built in, you can gen lock your system, which allows you to have better performance uh, on video in terms of any weird frame rate stuff, which we actually have a video on how to make your LED walls look great. And we'll link to that here because we do discuss that, um, how adjusting your frame rate can lead to some interesting artifacts on LED walls. For most people, I would say, you know, the newer processing, especially if you want to do creative type setups, um, if you want to do non-standard wiring schemes that's not just a simple zigzag, um, if you reconfigure a lot, or if you're using any of those higher end features, then the KU20 is really a clear winner. Um, the VX400 though is, Still a great processor, especially if, you know, you're doing like small festivals, small band type things where, you know what, you want to have multiple sources, be able to use it as a screen switcher, then you're going to win there. Both are great processors, 
Both do a great job. I would love to see from Novastar maybe a newer, lower-end processor like the KU that, that has a couple inputs, even if it's just two HDMI. So jot that down. Um, but the KU is a terrific value. It does a lot. Um, the MX are still amazing processors at a great price above it. Um, again, any prices you see on this video are at the time of this recording, so they're likely to go up in the future as things go. But I hope this helps you kind of understand some of the differences and make it a little bit less Greek um, in terms of what these different processors can do and how they can help you. Be sure to subscribe. Check out Learn Stage Lighting Gear by Above AVL if you need an LED wall, and we love to help you. Thanks so much. We'll see you in the next video.